good I, with that. I, you know, I wanted to ask RJ about this. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Hey, fellas. How you doing? Um, did, Odom, did, did, now, now, I know all the Odoms pretty well, uh, personally. And <laughs> and from from seeing where they've been, uh, obviously great playing careers. Uh, one of the brothers is, is coaching at Winnie Wood. One of his sons is at OSU. Another of his sons is a freak that's coming through. Um, and then, of course, in Missouri and all that stuff. But, you know, o, OU, having guys from Oklahoma on staff huh. and a guy that understands that, I, I, what was kind of refreshing was that Odom looks at this job as, I mean, it's a big-time deal to be the inside linebacker coach at Oklahoma. At Oklahoma. The well, kind of history that they've had has just been phenomenal, and I think he appreciates that, and it's, it's kind of good to see. I don't necessarily think that he's in the minority there, though, because remember, Kale's been here for almost 20 years, man, and that dude is from and of the state, and he's your best sure. recruiter, according okay. to many, not just 24-7 rankings. But yes, that was, that was the thing. I thought that a guy like Brian Odom was brought in, so do you don't lose a fight that you should win, and every fight you should win is at, at home, right? So you saw Josh Proctor leave. You saw Dax Hill leave. Andrew Rame is not necessarily penciled in to be at Oklahoma. You know, you're looking at guys like Javian Hester. You're looking at guys like Savian Morrison. What I'm saying is Brian Odom can walk into a living room and a dad will say, sit down. You're going to listen to what Coach Odom has to say because I remember this guy kicking the crap out of me and my friends when I was in high school. And this dude made good and he has a national championship ring and he worked his way up. He is Oklahoma. And we dig on yeah. hustle here, man. And that's going to go a long way in recruiting the state, the home state. Now, going outside, I'm really interested to see who they match him with because a lot of times these guys, they, they recruit in pairs. They don't necessarily just go out there by themselves. So that will be something to look at. But more than anything else, yeah, he's going to be able to walk into any living room in this state and maybe walk out with the kid that you need. Hey, you know, uh, lots of things to talk about here. But I ask you this because, look, you obviously have a, 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 a finger on the pulse of the OU fan base. We were talking about this sooner, uh, or, or earlier, I should say, that uh, uh, the excitement level for fans about this OU basketball team. Now, I get you, you do a lot of football videos, you get a lot of football feedback. I understand that. Uh, but your thoughts on, on how the fans feel about this OU team, which is not by any means. They don't have an outstanding player like Trey Young. They're not wowing you really with 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 uh, you know blowing people away or just an exciting brand to play. But they are a solid tournament team, and I'm I'm just curious to where the fan base is on this team. Well, I mean, I'm listening to the show earlier. Like, you know, I'm yeah. a fan of the show, and I think Austin was on to it. With look, Oklahoma fans don't want to get embarrassed by the basketball team. We 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 the, the, they're, they're not. We are not going to suffer 11 and 20 very long. That's that's just that can't happen. Being a tournament team is exactly where you're supposed to be. We're going to be happy about that. That's very cool. You're not going to sell out Lloyd Noble Center ever. I, I you're just not. Like you didn't sell it out when Blake was there. You didn't sell it out when Buddy Hill was leading teams to the Final Four. You didn't sell it out when Trey Young was a top five draft pick. You're not going to sell it out unless you start winning back to back to back to back national championships. And by then, a lot of things would have changed, right? One would be that Oklahoma has a basketball national championship. <laughs> but but uh, look, when you had Billy Tubbs back in the day, you weren't selling it out then, right? So I think that what team, what folks are looking at with this team is, hey, they're fun to watch. They play hard. They play good defense. That's an Oklahoma basketball team. And again, getting into the DNA of an Oklahoma fan, if anything, you better hustle. You better show me some effort, right? And that's where they are. And when you get to see a guy like Jamal b &E, the enemy, right, Hit that three in your in your eye hole as an OU fan in Gallagher Ibo Arena. That's gonna make you feel good. But let me put it this way: if I make an OU video on my channel, ain't a whole lot of people gonna click on that thumbnail, man. And I'm, that's just keeping it 100 and keeping it real. Whereas if we talk about recruiting, even in the Tulsa area, we could be here all day and people would eat it up. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because there are football schools and basketball schools. I just think to have a basketball team at a football school is always going to be difficult. It is. I, you, I have never heard anybody say it that way, and that is probably the best way I've ever heard it articulated, <laughs> is that if you are a hardcore Boomer Sooner OU fan, we just don't want to be embarrassed by our basketball team. Perfect. That, that is so perfect. I've yeah. never heard it labeled like that. And for look, for the most part, look, you're not going to be – Lon, a Lon Kruger team's not going to embarrass No, you, so. no, heavens no. But, well, but I, 
I, I think you're right there, RJ. But I mean, even to that point, when you're talking about a long Kruger team is never going to embarrass you, even when you're when you're bad, right? Because they were bad, and then they got Trey Young, and they got to be decent again. You felt good about the team, and you felt good about Lon. And I think that that is why Lon is a treasure to to Oklahoma. Honestly, is he knows his role, he understands his role, he inhabits his role, and he's very, very good at making you feel good about your basketball team. He's very good at making you feel good about not getting a Zion Williamson, about not getting a Julius Randle, about, hey, Trey Young ended up in our lap, and we're going to give this guy the keys because he ended up in our lap. I, I think that's underrated as a quality in any coach, especially in the college game, because it is a transient job for these kids, right? We're not supposed to call it a job, but it's a job interview. They want to be pros, whether it be in the NBA or in Europe, the G League, wherever. And to have a guy like Lon, who will shepherd you through and shepherd the fan base through and put things in perspective in such a way that we will all listen to what he has to say, that's that's almost as valuable as having a national championship caliber football coach because that guy can keep the lid on a lot of stuff that normally you might get upset about. Because I'm thinking about this in the days of, of Jeff Capel, and I'm thinking about this in the last days of Kelvin Sampson. Those dudes weren't very good at telling you what you wanted to hear as a fan or putting things in perspective. Lon, anybody's going to listen to Lon. And I think he started that from day one going, we're going to have open practices. We're going to make this team about the community, about the alumni. And we're going to be sure that everybody knows this is an above board program that you will be proud of just because they exist. Talking with RJ Young, YouTube sensation. Uh, real quick, before we let you go, a little football talk. It, it, it's from Twitter last night. Photo was taken with uh, some of the skill guys, some of the earlier enrollee guys. And one, Jalen Hurts, throwing the ball around uh, and spinning it to his guys and, and a little bit of uh, Pat Skelly, whatever you want to call it, a little workout. Um, it, it, it's weird to see, is it not? <laughs> I mean, it is, uh, it'll be even probably a little bit more weird in spring ball when you see Jalen Hurts roll out there in the crimson and cream. But it's, it, it's just it's going to take a little bit of an adjustment. But at the same time, you look up and you go, holy cow. And I think you hit the nail on the head. One of the articles you wrote is that Lincoln Riley brought Jalen Hurts to win in right now. We're going to win right oh, now. Yeah. No question. Well, and it's it's sexy. I mean, I, I mean, because like I said, put that put that photo on the media guide because you're looking at that assortment of talent. And you're looking at those dudes getting work in in January, and you're looking at them in sweats, and they got the OU Jordan gear on. And by the way, it's not just wide receivers and, and Jalen Hurts in there. You had Jaden Davis in there. I think you had Jeremiah Criddle and uh, Cradell in there too. So you had some defensive backs that were in there getting some work. And I looked at that group and I said, uh, see, that's Lincoln. That's Lincoln. And that they knew how to take – that's the other thing about these, this group of kids and I think all the kids coming up. They're real savvy with social media too. They understand – what the narrative is, then they understand their role in it. Remember, that photo was posted by C.D. Lamb, who, by the way, was flexing and flexing pretty hard. All of a sudden, that yeah, looks like he, a... That's all, he's at a, first, he's I was a like, different breed who's crap. the guy in back trying to push his bicep <laughs> down? Look, look like Josh Gordon. Look, yeah, I mean, like, when you talk about the arms, right? You're talking about a dude that's like, is he too big? No, he's not too big. But that, that was the thing. And I, I was... I was excited about it because I understand that these kids understand all the way because I'm, you know, I'm a recruiting guy, so I'm talking to them and I'm talking to folks around them. But seeing Jalen Hurts at OU, that's just, it's interesting. I don't know that it's off-putting. It's just, I'm really interested to see what you look like now because, frankly, you haven't had an opportunity to play in this sort of system, even down there at Channel View. So I'm, I'm just, I'm intrigued because you saw the weapons he had around him. By the way, it's not just CeeDee Lamb who's your best returning receiver and maybe your best returning offensive player, depending on you ask, outside of, outside of your quarterback. But look, you had a five-star wide receiver next to him. You had another five-star wide receiver next to him. You had a four-star cornerback. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's sexy. Yeah. It's just a good look. It is. I think that's the best way to put it. And, you know, it's funny. I, I did catch a couple of horns down in that photo. Once Jalen gets the horns down, then it's gonna that that is gonna be RJ's show for the day. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> hey man, we're all gonna be here for it. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good stuff. We're we're just over a week away from the debut of Fight Me, uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Nice. Ten a.m. Fight me! Ah! I'm excited, guys. I I'm having such a good time. Enjoy enjoy what 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 really is a football this weekend because Senior Bowl and Pro Bowl don't count. And we'll chat with you next week. All right, fellas, have a good one. <laughs>